coming tonight. Um, hopefully you've learned a few different uh, things today, but hopefully this will be one of the most boring, but also one of the most useful things you'll learn tonight. Um, bagging is really quite important. Um, I'll talk about myself first. Um, my name's Robert, for those of you who haven't met me. Um, I've been working at Aquatics now for five years in the industry. Um, so bag is a pretty important thing, whether you know, you're going to an auction, you're picking up fish um, from somebody's house, uh, or just transporting you know, large distances. Um, how you tie a bag and the correct ratio that you use and the size bag and the type of bag you use can be quite important to the survival of your fish traveling in sort of distance. So I'll just pull up my notes here. So I'm on track. Um, so yeah, as I said, bagging is very important. Um, if a bag fails for whatever reason, you use the wrong bag, you're not losing your fish. Um, so I'll go up and do bag selection. This is probably the most common bag you'll see around. Um, on the catalogue, it's basically called a medium round bottom. And the reason for that is it's got these, um, this round bottom. So they make the bag square, and they join these ends together, heat seal them, set it with a round bottom. Um, now a round bottom bag um, is far superior. And the reason for that is there's no edges. You'll find cheaper bags will just be a, a simply square edge. You'll find smaller fish, such as your tetras, are really small little fry. We end up in the corners of those bags. And when you actually put the bag down, those corners will fold up, crushing the fish or they get stuck in a fold. Um, so you can lose fish too, too commonly, especially with smaller fish. Um, so for that reason, avoid square bottom bags. Um, or more used for plants or um, you know, dry livestock, you know, dry, dry hardware, that sort of thing. Uh, and also avoid ones that are writing. Um, it's a pain in mind when you get a bag that's full of writing you can't see the fish. It sort of obscures them, especially during auctions. People want to hold the bag up and see the fish they can't. You know, got all this, um, this writing and things, you know, that sort of stuff. Although it does help, you know, with that. It's got uh, introduction instructions on how to put the fish into that. Um, so I'll basically go into now how to, um, when you go to bag and catch a fish. Um, so ideally the container you want to catch the fish in, uh, is some sort of pitcher or um, you know, plastic container. It's got graduated size, granulated size. You can actually see what sort of volume you've got that you're putting you know, into, your, into your bag. So ideally you want it uniform. Um, so for example, at aquatics aquariums, we use um, basically large plastic jugs. They've got one litre on the side. When you use this medium round bottom, you want about one litre, or just under one litre of volume. That'll give you the correct ratio of oxygen to, to water. And that'll be ideal. What is um, the correct ratio? Um, I mean, for these bags, I'll oh, probably about 2080. Or uh, in some cases, you just want enough to cover the fish. The fish is not going to run out of water. What they will run out of, what they will run out of is oxygen in the bag. So you want to maximise the volume, the volume of air in the bag. So you don't want to tie the bag down here because you're not, you know, you're not using the rest of this bag. You know. So uh, that comes down to technique of how to tie the bag. Um, so once you've caught your fish, you put it to your container. Um, make sure it's a nice open top one. So for example, well, this one here, I put it out of the kitchen. You see me want to, and then this way, you just hold the bag on the corners, tip in. And that's about the right volume for, uh, say, a small bag of about maybe 20 cardinals or something like that for a long journey. Um, yeah, so I'll go on the tying the bag, technique, that sort of thing. You'll find these bags have a, a seal, a heat seal on one side. You want to get those so they're both, the bag falls nicely, they're both on either side, not like that. Don't have them, as you can see that, but you want to have them like line nicely. Like that, hold with your two fingers. Now here's the important bit, your folds. You don't want to be folding like this, because you're losing that volume of air. Fold really tightly and really small ears. Tightly as possible. Once you've got the bag to it's reasonably firm, bring the two ends into each other. Grab as far as you can so the bag's nice and taut. It's not flaccid. And simply twist. You get to a point you don't want to twist too much. You can pop the bag at this point. You want to get it so it's nice and firm, but it's not going to pop. An important lucky bands. So you don't want to be using normal stationary lucky bands. You want something that's quite thick and doesn't have too much, um, too much elasticity in it. You'll just be folding there all day. Um, so once you've got your, like here, your little tail, you want to soft fingers and just grab this whole thing and you can pull it down. Some people like to sort of hold the bag, you want to be a bit neater. Just get rid of the twist that you made while still holding the bag. And then you can twist it so it's a bit longer to make it easier to tie. 
and simply fold and twist and wrap that around itself. From there, grab your lucky band. And simply just fold it around, twist it around that side. You want to make sure there's a reasonable height on that, about one centimetre or so, so it's not going to fall off. And that is your back tied. You can see it's nice and nice and firm. The lucky bands are going to come off. And I like tying it like with this um, this technique because when you want to open it, you simply all you do is hold the top of the bag, you pull, the lucky band comes off, and there you go. It's simply as easy as that. You know, tying like this with little little volume or you know air, and then you know that's the thing, no good. Um, yeah, a few pet hates is people come into the shop, they'll fill up the whole entire bag up with water and they'll bring you this bag of fish and of course, you know, absolutely no oxygen, you know, fish are gasping, you know, not, not a good technique. But hopefully tonight you've, um, you've learnt how to tie, um, tie, tie the bag correctly. You're more than welcome to come out the front <laughs> and practice if you like. Um, I've got a whole bag so I'll, I'll give you guys, if you want a few bags when you leave, just, uh, just let me know I'll leave the bag here. Just take a few of them. Can you do that uh, part of the lucky band again? I can do it, yeah. Do you want me to do it again? Yeah. <laughs> So, some people just grab it like that, but I find folds a lot easier. So, grab it like that. I find the folds hold the bag a lot better and tighter as well, instead of just grabbing it. Yeah, definitely. The fold down, so you've got a reason. I mean, you don't want to be folding to us like that, because you're really going to struggle. A little bit of room. Hold it like that. Grab the bag. Don't use a lucky sand, lucky band twice. Just becomes too stretchy. Can you use instead of no, you never get it right. You can use a heat sealer. Um, yeah, the exporters will use a heat sealer because it's quicker for them to scrap it back. Where are you putting the band exactly? You're not being clear about it. On top, I have my hands in the way. So, on top, I'm not going to do it on the whole face. So, you're looping it, you're looping the top bit together and basically tying that together. Yes, yeah, I, mean, I fold that little tail when you twist, you fold that tail around itself. You leave a little, uh, little a notch on the top and you fold it around that notch. It's a lot easier, but a lot easier to, um, to practice when you've actually got some water in the bag. If uh, this demonstration is going to be a bit hard. So, once again, fold down. Yeah, it's a bit hard. So once you got the whole top, once you twist it to a reasonable, you end up with the tail. That's the tail. As I said before, as a beginner, it's a lot easier to unfurl that and then just twist that around itself to get a bit more length. From there, the whole tail folds just around itself. You want to hold that there. It is quite a skill, it takes a while to learn. Or you can just simply fold that in half. You want to fold it in half like that, make it easier for yourself, that's fine. And then just simply wrap it around that tail. Thousands, thousands. Yep. So that's pretty much it. I mean, um, don't be worried. Don't be afraid. The first few bags will be a bit, you know, they'll be a bit floppy. You know, they won't be, um, you know. Hopefully, they'll be as good as this, but unlikely. It takes a bit of practice to get the, the firmness in the bag, and that just comes from more experience. But um, I mean, some people like to just tie them around the top and that sort of thing. But as I said, this is the best technique to learn because it's, um, it's simply if you want to open the bag. You pull the lucky band shoots off somewhere, that's alright, just hit you on the eye, and then yeah, you can reuse the bag. Anyway, is there any questions at all? No? Well, I said you're more than welcome to come and get a few free bags for some practices, or if you want to go to the auction. Uh, these bags, um, you think if you buy an entire box, um, generally, <coughs> if you go to your aquarium store, you say, can I buy a few bags, I'll give them to you for free, or they'll cost you, you know, five cents each. And they're, not, they're not very expensive. If anything, I'd probably recommend just walk, you know, take a trip, buy probably a hundred few fish breed up, just buy a hundred at a time, you know, it's only going to cost you a couple of dollars. No, you've got some bags on hand. No shopkeeper to clean the points to try to tell you. We'll give them. <laughs> <laughs> we do it because they're good bags. The points will try and put equal weight in gold. Yes. No, they're not. They'll give them to you. You said you use uh, don't use your standard, you know, lucky band and stationary lucky band. Yep. Where you, you, get, where you, get you can do. I uh, believe you just go look for the office one. So these are used, I think, for um for wads of money, <laughs> if anything. 
Because they're, they're very small and they're a lot thicker. They're not going to snap very easily. It takes quite a lot to snap these. Size 30 from Officeworks. Yeah. There you go. Always just twist it and double it up. That way you can get some like silly. Pardon? Because if you've got a large black bag, you can twist it up and you've got a small You can be, but it's a lot. I mean, this isn't the best. I mean, you can use, for, large, for very, very large bags, you use the much thicker, wider ones. We prefer to use those because one, one will simply, you get about two wraps over the actual um, top of the bag. So. Horses for horses, use a larger bag, use more water, use a larger, use a larger, um, of the band, larger bag, you know, more and more in the correct ratio. Anyway, is what's that all? What's the biggest bag you can get? Uh, the biggest bag you can get, I believe, is a square, they don't, the biggest bag is a square bottle, usually for large koi. Um, if you're using a very large bag like that, I mean, the head's not going to get caught, they're just, they're just that big. Um, I think it's probably, once it's fully inflated, probably sits about that, by that, and it probably holds, you put it, you put in about, probably holds about how much, 20, 30 litres, but you put in about five. Okay, and what size fish? Uh, large koi, up to about 45 centimetres. Oh, yeah. If your fish is any bigger than that, uh, uh, over 45 centimetres, um, if you sit them flat, the, the tops are going to stick out of the, out of the water. Um, so you generally end up putting, putting them straight to an esky. So if you've got very large fish, straight to an esky. Yeah. You just use a liner, fish, the lid, tape it, because they can <coughs> bump the lids off, which they do. And, um, and yeah, oh, otherwise, yeah. So, you do you have a double bagging? Double bagging, I can do. And why so what, double bagging? What you've got now, that, 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 that <laughs> double bagging is uh, a very valuable skill. I'll just use this. <laughs> no, don't do that, don't do that. So say you've got very spiky fish, um, things like loaches or anything with spines, feather fins, a lot of catfish have a lot of spines, that can pop the bag. As soon as you stress them out, you put the gas in there or you, you're tying the bag, they'll flare their fins out and they will pop the bag. They're thin bags these. So you will need a double bag. It also helps for long trips if you're, uh, if you're going quite a ways. It helps to provide a little bit of insulation. There's a bit of a tiny amount of air between the, uh, the layers of the bag which just helps to keep it more insulated. Um, so you want to put your fish, obviously, put your container into one bag, have them there. Open one bag up. Now you don't want to be uh, inflating this, you want to get all the air out because it makes it a lot easier. You fold one bag inside of each other, like that. Make sure they, uh, all the seams are sort of lined up, that's ideal. <coughs> put the one bag, the bottom bag, the top, the top bag, the outside bag, right down to the bottom. You want to be focusing on tying the inside bag. I usually you use gas because you, you can hold it right to the top and get the maximum volume of air. But um, you still can tie it manually, it's fine. So, same technique, fold down, twist. You can see it's going to be a bit, um, a bit on the short side. I mean, that would be too short. You want a bit more volume of air in there. Anyway, so once you've got that tail, just twist, fold down. Maybe like a band. Make sure you don't catch your folds in your lucky band. The outside bag. So once you've got it like that, take your outside bag, same again. We work more liberal with this time. Just grab the bottom of that. Twist the top in your hand, and same again. So, Rob, are you pretty popular in health ed? <laughs> no, I don't. A lot of people do that. You show patrons things that things are there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's it. So, once you've done that, you normally don't want your tails that long so they can get caught. <coughs> but um, that's double bagging. You can see, you know, you've got a bit more insulation there. Um, and if they pop one bag, you've got another bag on. Hey, Rob. Uh -huh. We've got the fish, I know. It's in there. It's one of those glass catfish. You can't see it too much. Um, but yeah, I've never had a fish go through a double bag, so that's how reliable double bagging is. Uh, another word of advice would be um, doing discus or extremely sensitive fish. I like to lie on their side or get really stressed out during transport. You can put a layer of paper between these two bags. Um, and that just sort of blacks them out. They get a little bit less, less stressed. I've never, I've never had a better journey. Uh -huh. When they're in transit, mm -hmm. like say when you bring a half of fish over from East or whatever, mm -hmm. do they tend to leave the bags upright? Or um, they, they leave the bags upright due to the fact you can get more bags in the esky. Yeah. 
Um, so they'll tie them to the correct length. The tongue's a bit shorter with the correct length, so they, they sit in the esky just below the lid. And that way you can fit the maximum amount of fish. Um, ideally, I like to lie them down like that. You've got a, um, a larger surface here. It's going to allow for more gas exchange, um, more oxygenation of the water, so happier fish. And you already, you already just talked about water volume versus the air, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, you want to probably one part out of five, ideally. I mean, yeah, at, at, at least. I mean, obviously, enough water to cover the fish so that, and, and comfortably for the number of volume in there. Um, you can find all different types of charts that will be a recommend this many fish for the amount of water and that sort of thing. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, the rest there. So it's always better that way. I'll, I'll compare the opposite. A lot of people miss the misconception that you do a lot of water. Most definitely. Most definitely. As I said, if people go fill the whole bag, that's an absolutely wrong thing to do. Just enough fish, to, just enough water to cover the fish both ways, ideally. You don't want to have the fish out of water if you know, they're like um, uh, horizontal rather than vertical. And then you have the rest there. Yeah. When you're doing that twist method, mm -hmm. I think Chris was showing us her method which is different to yours. She yep. does a, a fold, that she folds it down and then wraps. Yep, I, I exactly, that's the, that she taught me. So that's the method I use. Yeah, fold, you want to fold down, Bring them in towards each other and then twist the whole lock. That, that folding action provides a bit of a lock. Um, so you, you're, you're folding them down and you're twisting them around. So it's really quite, I mean, even if the bag were to come off, it's still got a twist. You know, you still need to have it like that and then have pressure on it to actually push that twist and the fold out. Did you use the fold back on that when you were doing it? This one? Yeah. Oh, no, not, not the top bag, but yeah. Uh, okay. You want to have them nice and tightly against each other. You don't want to tie. I mean, you can tie it like like that, but then you've got a you know a bag inside the bag to go really long. Yeah. yeah. You want to have pressure on the bag, so if there is a leak, or it's not going to leak out through the gap in the second bag. If you've got it like that. This is up line. Like that, water will yeah leak out into this area. You'll have less volume with this bag, and yeah. you're going to have them tight as tight as possible up, up against each other. So if there is a leak, then yeah, the water stays in there. You talked about the fish, how many bags per fish. We've had a few bags come to the option where there's been quite large fish. In all honesty, the, the less fish per bag, the better. Um, for an example, for this size bag, so this medium round bottom bag, you probably want to have no more than about uh, five electric yellows, maybe about three to four centimetres at the most. Well, you know, I'm one who's, who's quite, um, quite conservative in terms of how many fish I want to put into a bag. You need find when they ship them from. I mean, they can do a lot more than that, obviously, but you want to give yourself a bit of a safety margin. Uh, when they when they ship them, you'll have about 150 neons in a bag that big. You get them with the water <coughs> very, very you know, sodden with ammonia, low oxygen, and you yeah. You've got to get them out. Do you use um, oxygen tablets when they're transporting them? Oxygen tablets? No, just um, just industrial oxygen out of a bottle is best. No point in buying medical grade. There's really no difference between the, uh, the medical and the um, industrial grade. Um, oxygen, but when you bag with oxygen, you want to have your volume of water <coughs> squeeze out all of the air and then gas from there. That way, you're, you're giving yourself the maximum amount of oxygen in that bag. I mean, what's that? Uh, you know, you're only getting, you know, bagging with you know, this method, just bagging like that, you're only getting about I think, atmospheric oxygen is about 30% or so. Even less. Yeah, even less. So, you know, what about with the peroxide in there? You can do, but you, it's such a small volume, you do risk burning the fish. And uh, peroxide only works to oxygenate the water once it's broken down. Um, so people do add a bit of magnesium, that sort of thing in there. Um, I just find just good clean water before you have the fish, the fish in the bag, um, and you get them the last possible moment where you want to take them somewhere. They're not sitting in the bag half an hour before, you know, even need to leave or whatever. Um, in terms of uh, additives you can add to, to bagging, um, stress coat and ammo lock work very well. Um, so stress coat, whether or not it provides a bit of a stress coat to the fish is, is arguable, but uh, it does seem to work to calm the fish down. Uh, and also an ammo lock, so uh, metabisulfates and that sort of thing, even prime will work well. Um, that'll basically bind any ammonia in the bag. So if they're being shipped very long distances over a day or two, um, then it's ideal to do that. How long would you have to stay in a bag like that for? Uh, in a bag like this, uh, maximum about three days. Absolute maximum. When they, when they ship them, yeah. I, I mean, safely about one day. We get, we get plenty of customers with oxygen. Yeah, with oxygen and all you know, that, that, have those additives. But if you're doing just this method of just you know, manually folding and you have a bag similar to this, you probably want to have them ideally no more than about 
about six hours. But that's a very conservative estimate. So you can push that in up to a two and day. Oh, so I'm giving the um, I'm giving the estimate where you you you're pretty much 90% not going to lose fish unless something goes really viral. So yeah. um, while we're talking about bagging, what about debagging? Debagging. Uh, what's the process <laughs> typically when you someone gets back home? Yep. What's your recommended? As I said, if you tie it with this method, it's as simple as it's as simple as pulling that tab. So you basically pull it, lucky man comes off. Spin the fish around, give him a headache, and that's fine. And then just simply folding the sides down. And then you can go ahead and uh, acclimatize them as that. I do like to fold the sides down right to the bottom, then that way you don't get the back folding over like that, and uh, fish can't breathe. Before I run up to the bottom, put that tank clothesline peg on the edge. That's the best way I find it. Any other questions or comments? No, and then I'll finish up this rather. No, if you could leave one on the table when you're done so people can come up and admire the handiwork during the right. Yeah, yeah, right. That's all right. I said, guys, I want me to come and grab some bags before you leave today, whether you want to use them for options or um, for practice and golf. All right, thank you, Captain.